This lesson is all about averages from a list. Please get the title, grade and date into your books. There are three types of average that we are going to deal with in this lesson, along with one measure of spread, which we'll come on to later. The three averages are mode, median and mean. You should have covered this in year seven and potentially also at primary school as well. So this should just be a little bit of a review. If we are looking for the mode, we are looking for the most common piece of data. If we went for a numerical example, and I gave you something that looked like this, the mode clearly is three because this is the most common number. You do need to make sure that you don't just circle the answer because in an exam, this would not be classified as acceptable. If a list of data has more than one number that appears more than any other, so for instance in this list here, 5 and 6 both appear the same number of times, there are two possible things that we can say. We can either say no mode, because there is no single number that appears more than anything else, or we can use the phrase bimodal. This tends to be something that appears more on the GCSE statistics exam that you'll do in year 10, but we can use it all the way through in maths as well. It is acceptable. The next type of average is the median. To find the median, we need to do two different things. Step number one is we put all the numbers in order. Unlike the mode, this must be to do with numbers. When we've put the numbers in order, that can be smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest, we then need to find the middle value. I'll come back to in a minute why I'm being so specific about the word the middle value. So if we went for an example, so I had maybe 9, 3, 4, five and seven. Step number one would be to put those numbers in order. Therefore this would give me three, four, five, seven and nine. And then I would need to find the middle number. There's a couple of ways of doing this. From a list, probably the quickest and easiest way is simply to count into the middle, therefore finding the median. Just like with a mode, I'd be expecting you to write median is 5, median equals 5, or something that was a little bit more than just circling your answer. Where this becomes a little bit trickier is when you've got more than one number that appear in the middle. So for instance, here is a list that I have already put in order. If I was looking for the median here, again using the same method, I'd count in and here we actually find that there are two numbers in the middle of this question. In order to find the median, what I would need to do is find what is halfway between those two. This one's pretty obvious, halfway between 8 and 10 is 9, so we would say that the median is 9. Where this can sometimes become a little trickier is if the list has numbers in the middle that are quite far apart. So once again, I've cheated a little bit, and we are going to say that these are my numbers already listed in order. To find the middle number, or the median, again, we would count in and find that these two are in the middle. It's not as easy to look at these two numbers and straight away work out what is halfway between them. So there is a little trick. The little trick is that we can add the two numbers together and then half them, so divide by 2. So here, 21 plus 59 gives us 80. If I half that, it gives us 40. So 40 is actually what number is in between those two. This is a very powerful little trick that we can use and you will be using quite a lot all the way through up to GCSE because some of the numbers do get a little bit more tricky when you get further up.
The next average that we're going to look at is the mean. So if we are looking for the mean, this, just like the median, is a two-step process. Step number one is we add up all the numbers. Step number two is we take this total to the sum, the total of all the numbers, and we divide by the number of numbers. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. For the purpose of this lesson, I'm going to say you can actually use a calculator if you wish, if you can't do the divisions. Sometimes you will need to use it in the exam, sometimes you will not be allowed. So here's my example. So we've got 5, 9, 3, 1, and 2. Step number 1 to find the mean is I would need to add up all these numbers. So we've got 14, 17, 18, 20 all together. And because there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers, we would do 20 divided by 5, which gives us 4. Hopefully no need for a calculator on this one. And therefore we can write that the mean equals 4. There are no variations in this one until we get onto averages from a table. The only thing you need to look out for is if you are using a calculator, do step this into two different sections. Do not type into your calculator 5 plus 9 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2 and then straight away divide by 5 because what your calculator will do is use bid mass. It would only do 2 divided by 5. It would not take the total and divide that by 5. The final step to do with averages is the range. Now this is not an average, it's actually known as a measure of spread. So it tells us how spread out the numbers are in a list. In order to calculate the range, it's actually a calculation. We would need to do the biggest number, take away the smallest number. Now because we are going to be using this a little bit later on with various different diagrams when I return, I'm actually going to start also referring to this as the maximum take away, and this is my favourite word to write, and joined up, the minimum. So if I had an example and I said I wanted to find the range of these numbers here, all I would need to do is write down range equals, I would look through the list for the maximum, in this case 9, take away the minimum, in this case 1, therefore my range is 8. You've now got enough information and hopefully enough notes in your exercise book for you to complete the worksheet um, with lists of numbers. For each list, you are going to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. Please can you ensure that you set out your work carefully so it is easy to see which calculation and which average you are finding. Do not do them all in the same small space. It will be very difficult to mark later on, and it will be very difficult for you to understand which one is which. Good luck with the worksheet. There should be plenty there for you to get on with.